Press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. You were asked to go to from Jodhpur when the riots broke out in Gujarat. You were asked to go to Gujarat immediately. The riots broke out on 27th of February, uh, of February after the dead bodies were brought. I think it was a blunder to to have brought them in a convoy uh -huh. uh, into, but that was an administrative decision. Uh, but anyway, it inflamed passions. People who saw the trucks and the and the bodies. Uh, obviously, their passion got inflamed. They sh it shouldn't have been done. Anyway, I. So you reached. When did you? When do you reach Ahmedabad? I reached Ahmedabad. See, let me give you the chronology. the whole chronology. On 27th evening, when I was, uh, I had just attended an exercise. Mm -hmm. I get a call from General Padmanabhan. Uh, he then I, chief. Of then chief. Uh, I was a little surprised because uh, generally we follow the chain of command. Sure. It should have been to the command headquarters, to the core headquarters, and then to me, to the divisional commander. Right. But he says Zoom, that's my army name. Every, You're called Zoom. I'm called Zoom. Uh, Why are you called Zoom, if I may? Well, I was in the relay team in school. Okay. So, uh, so everybody has a name. So General Padmanabhan said to you Zoom, get moving, get your troops into Ahmedabad, and he says, cut out the, the riots. So I said, sir, it'll take me 48 hours to reach. He said, don't worry, the Air Force is laying on the aircraft. Okay. So I, I said, all right, sir. Uh, I uh, sent a message to my deputy, GOC, mm -hmm. a brigadier. I said, get the troops moving. We were already uh, mobilized. And I got in into my gypsy along with my ADC. And I reached uh, the airfield at about 10 p.m. Okay, this is on the night of the 27th. 28th, 28th. Okay, on the night of the 28th of February. Night of 28th February, I reached the airfield. The in air, Ahmedabad? In, in, no, no, in uh, Jodhpur. I see. The aircraft were coming in, Air Force aircraft. Sure. And uh, I didn't wait. I took the first aircraft with the troops who had come and I flew into to Ahmedabad. The rest of the troops, about uh, 3,000 of them, came onto the airfield and 60 flights brought us in. Total are 12 companies, uh, no, 6 but 24 companies okay. of the infantry were flown in on that night. Mm -hmm. um, so, when do you reach Ahmedabad? You reach I, I reached at about a, a midnight of 1st, 2nd. Okay. 1st, no, or 28th, 1st. Okay. I reached at midnight. So, so the deputy GOC of the formation, uh, Brigadier Mera, met me. And what did you do? Once you reach Ahmedabad, yes. your book says that you reach at. Um, around 1 or 2 yes, a.m. And what, so what I, happened? So I was expecting the transport, the magistrate, the police guides and the communications to okay. be there. Mm -hmm. I found nothing except sure. a brigadier. So I says, where's all the logistics we had been promised? Well, he says, the state government will arrange that. I've got nothing to do with it. So I said, where's the chief secretary? He says, uh, he's abroad. Who's officiating? He gave me some number. I tried to call, call, call. There was no reply. So I thought the best our way to handle it is to go and report to the Chief Minister. Then, so I asked for a guide. then Chief Minister uh, Mr. Narendra Modi. Modi. I know Mr. Narendra Modi. Uh, a guide was there and I reached his house at 2 at two a.m. on the 1st of March. Uh, we traversed through horrendous sights. There was, uh, curfew was supposed to be informed. Police there standing with lattes. They had not been issued weapons. Uh, the mobs burning and rampage. Uh, and pillaging um, uh, property. What were the police doing? They were doing nothing. They were just standing there. Okay, and you yeah. drove through. The I drove through all that. that. Uh, I, I drove through the map. They didn't touch us because they knew we were the army. And I reached the chief minister's residence and I told him that there's terrible uh, mayhem going on. You told the chief minister. I said, and I said, uh, he obviously knew it. I said, uh, we had been promised these things. They're not there. And I said, where are the trouble spots? I had taken a tourist map. Sure. But I didn't have a map of the city, so we plotted out. Um, so who else was there? Yourself? Yes. Fortunately, there the Raksha Mantri was there, Mr. George Fernandez, looking very worried. Mm -hmm. And so he was already there. Nadine. He was already there. They were eat, eating a late dinner at two a.m. So I joined in, and um, then we decided. So we yourself, went. George Fernandez, and, and then Chief and Minister Chief. Narendra Modi, That's three right. of you. All then. three of us were there. We decided on the deployment of the army, and I requested immediately. I said, we need the transport, we need magistrates, police guides, communication. And he agreed? He said, yes, they'll come. So I headed back, I, the troops landed, and uh, we kept waiting, nothing came. So then what happened then? So we were at the airfield, 
And that morning, then Mr. George Fernandez came and addressed the troops at about 10 or 11. But you, but you stayed on... The, we stayed on the airfield. I mean, where, see, in a city, where do you go on foot? We don't know. We don't, we don't have So, guides. no orders were given to the Indian Army, to yourself and to your... Troops. No, I was given orders. No, but to come into the city and to curb I the I didn't violence. have the wherewithal. I was given clear orders, curb the violence. But where do I go? Okay. Without transport, without, uh, without uh, you know... So, whose responsibility is this to have given you the wherewithal? Well, it was the state government. I think it was a failure of the... The chief secretary was not there. So, I don't know who the chief minister gave orders to. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it was a case of administrative failure, total. Uh, it was a case of... So, who do you think should take responsibility? Is it... I will not make minister? a statement. I will not make a statement on that. Uh, the chief minister himself would know who is responsible. But it was a case of administrative failure. The, the home minister, perhaps. The home minister of the state. Whoever it was. Uh, I don't uh, comment on, on politicians or uh, on politics. Uh, I only deal with administrators. But since the chief secretary was not there, I had to go, and, uh, go to the chief minister. Uh, directly. Uh, we found out, I sent, I deployed a, a three battalions in Ahmedabad. So how long did it take then for the orders to come? No, the orders were... So no, how long did it take for you to get into the city then? The, well, the transport came, the, the transport came on uh, 2nd at 10 o'clock. So for a whole 24 hours or more than 24 hours... We were sitting, we were at, sitting the at the airfield. That's right. Not doing very much. That's right. Okay, so then on the second you come out into the city we, and what we, do you see? I found mayhem. I found, uh, so we, we opened fire at the arsonists and uh, I think we killed two or three and wounded about 20. I had given strict orders that firing must be below the belt right. and that's why the casualties were less. Some casualties were carried away by, by workers of the right wing. Uh, so what do you mean? There were people... There were people who were shot but they were carried away. We couldn't recover the bodies. Okay. We couldn't... Uh, they, they were carried away to, maybe to hospitals or wherever they were. And there I found that uh, surrounded minority pockets with crowds being for the blood and the police firing into the windows of the buildings. So I said, what are you doing? They said, we are keeping the mobs at bay. I said, then fire the other way. So who the there were the, the mobs police, were the mobs were Hindu mobs majority okay I never use religion it was majority the majority community community surrounding the minorities see there you oh, have okay. you have walled ghettos mm -hmm. in Ahmedabad in Ahmedabad do you remember the names of these places like Juhapura Juhapura and there are a whole lot I'm forgetting okay. but the police was totally biased parochial. And um, they were letting fly at Muslims through the windows. The poor fellows are trying to uh, protect their buildings and they're firing through the windows. So I got very, very angry. And, uh, but wherever majority mobs had to be dealt with, they never took action. It was left to the army. Or wherever the, the mobs of the majority community? No, the mobs of the majority community. The minorities were all stuck and scared to death in, the, in their buildings. So you're saying the police took no action? At None at all. And why do you think that? No, I don't know. Uh, yes, I am aware that police forces all over the country have got totally communalized. I've seen it in my hometown in Meerut and Sardana. Totally communalized, totally parochial and unreliable. They cannot be trusted in a riot to, uh, because uh, they take sides. So that was, uh, it explains, it's a phenomenon all over the country. But you don't think this is true of the Indian Army? Oh, not at all. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to um, to settle the thing within 48 hours. We had curbed violence uh, after they found that we meant business. And there is a danger of long-term deployment of the armed forces, right. of them getting, uh, well, uh, this thing rubbing off on them. And so that is why... So we'll talk about that, like for example, the Armed Forces Special Powers Act in Jammu yes, and Kashmir I'll, I'll as well as in the Northeast. Right. But to finish the Gujarat story, so you settled, you quelled the riots in 48, 48 hours. hours. They were quelled. Um, so you come out into the city on the 1st of March and by the... No, time, 2nd of March. On the 2nd of March, that's, that's right, right. Because from the 2nd of March and by 4th, everything, all, all while, of course, there's enmity and, and, and abusing, and, but uh, no violence. So your experience was of the Gujarat police openly communal, taking sides in favor of the Hindus and against the Muslims. Absolutely. This, now, this is not only a phenomenon in Gujarat. 
And I, did you did you report this to? Of the course, chief it minister? is all well. I, I of course I didn't tell him that your police are communal. But uh, when the uh, defense minister asked me, I said change the police chief, sack him. This is to George Fernandez. To George Fernandez, I said change him. Uh, so he says you've taken the words out of my mouth. These were his very words. But nothing happened. They didn't change him. He was there right through. Yes, uh, several months later, Mr. Gill. KPS Gill. Uh, KPS Gill, who was given credit for Punjab and, right. and Gujarat. Right. Uh, well, he just came in after the army right. had done his work.